Hi guys, it's me Jess here and welcome back, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make a baby inspired dress in a cottage style. This dress comes with a heart neck design, a double fade, perp sleeve and two T skirt. I also use the gearing fabric technique from elastic band to replace by the zipper so it makes the dress fit nicely to my body but I still feel comfortable when wearing it. That's why I hope you guys will like it and check it out and let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the dress. To make the front bodice pattern, I draw a straight line cutting the edge horizontal line first. From the cutting point, I mark up 17cm on the straight line. It's the half of my shoulder side. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 2.4cm, which is 1 by 10 my shoulder side minus 1cm. From the first mark on the straight line, I mark down 6cm, which is the width of the shoulder of the thread that I want. Then connect that mark to the end of the perpendicular line to create a shoulder line for the front bodice. From the first straight line, I make another line at 22cm from it. It's a quarter of my bust side plus 2cm. It will be the bust line of the front bodice. From the cutting point between this line and the edge horizontal line, I mark up 22cm which is a quarter of my bust side plus 2cm. After that, I continue the perpendicular line from the shoulder to cut the bust line at one point. From this cutting point, I mark to inside 2.5cm. Then connect that mark to the end of the shoulder line. After that, I mark in the middle of the slanted line before connecting it to the mask on the bust line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to finish the sleeve line for the front bodice. From the first straight line, I keep drawing another one 40cm from it. It's the length from the shoulder to above the belly button. It's also the length of the baddest that I want. From the end of this line, I mark up 20cm, which is a quarter of my waist side plus 3cm. Then connect that mark to the end of the sleeve line to create the side line of the front bodice. From the first straight line, I mark at 15cm on the edge horizontal line. It's the length from the shoulder to above my breast. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. After that, I mark up 8.5cm on this line, which is the half of the width of the front neck that I want. Then connect that mark to the top of the shoulder line to create the neck line for the front bodice. From the mark on the edge horizontal line, I make another mark at 3cm next to it. Then connect that mark to the mark on the perpendicular line next to it that I just made before to finish the neck line for the front bodice. From the top of the side line, I mark down 7cm. From the end of the bust line, I mark up 10cm, which is the half of the width between two breasts. Then connect two marks together. From the end of this line, I mark down 3cm. From the mark on the side line, I make two more marks at 1.5cm to side of it. Then connect them to the mask on the slanted line to create a dark there for the front bodice. After that, I measure the width up to that line and redraw to make sure they will be the same. From the mark on the bust line, I draw a horizontal line to cut the waistline. From the cutting point, I make two marks at 1.5cm to side of it. From the marks on the bust line, I mark down 6cm on the horizontal line. Then connect that mark to two marks I just made before to create a dot there. Adding 1cm for seam allow and after that, and we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. You will need to cut this pattern in full fabric at the edge horizontal line. Moving to the back bodice pattern, I draw a straight line, cut the edge horizontal line first. From the first straight line, I draw another one at 2cm next to it. From the end of this line, 
I marked up 17 cm, which is the half of my shoulder side. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The length of this line will be 2.4 cm, which is 1 by 10 my shoulder side minus 1 cm. From the mass on the second straight line, I marked down 6 cm, which is the width of the shoulder strap of the batter that I want. Then connect that mark to the end of the perpendicular line to create a shoulder line for the back batter. From the first straight line, I make another one at 22 cm next to it. It's a quarter of my bust side plus 2 cm. From the end of this line, I marked up 21 cm which is a quarter of my bust side plus 1 cm. After that, I continue the perpendicular line from the shoulder to cut the bust line. From this cutting point, I mark in 1.5 cm. Then connect that mark to the end of the shoulder line. After that, I mark in the middle of the slanted line before connecting it to the mask on the bust line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to create a slit line for the back bodice. From the second straight line, I keep drawing another one at 40 cm from it. It's the length from the shoulder to above the belly button. It's also the length of the bed that I want. From the end of this line, I mark up 19 cm, which is a quarter of my waist side plus 2 cm. Then connect that mark to the end of the slit line to create the side line of the back bodice. After that, I measure the final width of the side line at the front bodice without the dart to redraw the side line for the back bodice. From the ending line, I mark up 18 cm on the edge horizontal line, then drawing a straight line to that mark. From the end of this straight line, I mark up 8.5 cm, which is the half width of the front neck that I made before. Then connect that mark to the top of the shoulder line to create a neckline for the back bodice. I also draw a horizontal line from that mark to cut the ending line too. Adding 1 cm for seam allow and after that, and we will have the back bodice part and after cutting. The back bodice will come with the side part and in the middle part. And I increase the width of the middle part and four times to create the gathering fabric there later. And here are the final part of the back bodice after all. Moving to the sleeve part, and I measure the total width of the sleeve lines at the front and the back bodice foot. After that, I draw a straight line cut the edge horizontal line. From the edge horizontal line, I draw another line 5 cm above it. It's the half of the gathered fabric at the top of the sleeve that I want. From the cutting point between the second horizontal line and the straight line, I mark at 15 cm on the horizontal line. It's 1 by 5 my bust side minus 1 cm. This will be the top of the sleeve. From this mark, I measure and draw a slanted line with 21 cm, which is the half width of the total sleeve line that I checked before at the baddest part, minus 2 cm. I divide that line into three equal parts after that. From the middle between two top parts, I draw an outside perpendicular line with 2 cm width. At the bottom part, I mark in the middle foot. Then I draw an inside perpendicular line later with a half cm width. After that, I draw a curved line to this mark to create a slit line for the slit pattern. From the top of the slit, I mark at 33 cm on the edge horizontal line. It's the length of the slit from the shoulder to above the elbow, plus 2 cm. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. After that, I draw a horizontal line from the edge of the slit line to cut the new straight line to create the underarm big line for the slit pattern. Add in 1 cm for seam allow and after that, and we will have the outside sleeve part and after cutting, you will need to cut this part in full fabric at the edge horizontal line. From the ending line of the outside sleeve part, I draw another line at 4 cm above it. And we will have the inside sleeve part and after cutting, you will need to cut this part in full fabric at the edge horizontal line. The skirt part of the dress is quite simple by basic rectangles. Now let's start sewing this dress. Here's the front bodice after cutting. 
I copy the dots from the part into the fabric and sew to finish them after that. Then I connect the front batter to two pieces of the back batters at the shoulder lines. Doing the same for the lining parts, then connect them together at the neckline by the pins. Here's the middle part of the back bodice. I fold it in the middle first, then I sew the straight seam there for the elastic pin to go through later to create the gathering fabric. The length of the elastic pin will be two times the width of the middle back bodice pattern. You can make this part by using the shearing techniques as well. I also make two long ties for the back bodice. The position for this tie will be 3 cm from the top of the back neckline. I put them in the middle between the main and the lining part. I also put the gathering fabric of the middle part of the back bodice to its position as well. Then sew to connect them on together. After sewing, I make a few small cuts at the neckline before turning the lining inside. Then making the under stitching seam after that. Don't forget to iron to keep the folding lines and make it nicer. After that, I connect the side line of the main part and the lining part together. Then I connect the sleeve lines and the ending line of the main part and the lining part together. And we will finish the baddest part after sewing. Moving to the sleeve, I connect the inside and the outside sleeve together at the ending line. Make sure the inside sleeve will be 1cm longer than the outside sleeve at the seam allowance. After sewing, I fold the inside sleeve to inside around a half cm foot, then keep folding it over to create a fabric hole there and sewing. I put an elastic band with around 25 cm width, which is bigger than the width of my arm, to go through the fabric hole. Mm -hmm. 
then sew two ends of the elastic pin to two ends of the fabric hole to keep them there. After that, I connect two under and big lines of the inside sleeve and the outside sleeve together. Then I connect the sleeve line together after that. I make two loose seams at the top of the sleeve to create a garring fabric there. The final width of the sleeve line after on will be the same as the sleeve line from the baddest part so you can connect them together later. Moving to the skirt part, here is the second T of the skirt. I connect two lane lines of the rectangles together to create a circle fabric part. Then I finish one side of the circle fabric which is the end of the skirt by folding the end fabric inside two times with one centimeter each time and sewing. At the other side of the circle fabric, I make two loose seam foot. Then I create a garring fabric there later. The final width of the garring fabric will be the same width as the first tier, so we can connect them together later. At the first tier, I connect two lane lines of the rectangle together to create a circle fabric foot. Then I make two loose seam at one side of the circle fabric there later. Make sure to keep a part of the fabric with our gathering to connect to the middle part of the back bodice. And the final width of the first tier will be the same at the end of the bodice part, so we can connect them together later. After on, I connect the second tier to the first tier to finish the skirt part. Then I connect the skirt to the top part of the dress. And I finish this DIY. Here's my final result. This dress is just so cute but still so comfy. Hope you guys will like it and try it out soon. See you next week.